Okay, so if you want to listen, come closer because I don't want to project my voice. So I, I want to I want to do a an interpretation of the passage in Matthew 13, verses three and onwards, about the parable of the sower. So Jesus says, "Behold, the sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, and as he sowed, some seeds fell beside the road." And the birds came and ate them up. Others fell on the rocky places where they did not have much soil. And immediately they sprang up because they had no depth of soil. But when the sun had risen, they were scorched. And because they had no root, they withered away. Others fell amongst the thorns. And the thorns came up and choked them out. And others fell on good soil and yielded a crop. Some a hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirty. He who has ears to hear, hear. And I, I want to stop, I want to talk about how as Christians we apply that passage to our lives. Because a lot of Christians aren't thinking about what this passage teaches. Let's be clear. The passage is not, you're not the seed. The seed is the word of God. The seed is the truth. You are the soil. That's who you are in that parable. You're either a stony pavement or your ground with thorns or your ground that's shallow or your fertile ground. But you, in the parable, you are the grounding. You're not the seed. And so as Christians, we have a choice about who we are that don't read that passage fatalistically the, 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 let's go through it one by one so it says others sowed some seeds fell by the road and the birds came and ate them up if you are that kind of ground then you are a person whose heart is hard to the word of god and you don't wish to allow that word of God to dwell deeply in you. You resist it. You oppose it. And then the demons come and they steal that knowledge from you. They pluck it out of your heart by another narrative or another story that contradicts the gospel. Whether it be Islam or liberalism or Hinduism or Zionism or whatever. If you are... Others fell on the rocky places where they did not have much soil and immediately they sprang up because they had no depth of soil. But when the sun had risen, they scorched and because they had no root, they withered away. If you're that kind of soil, you're someone who receives the word of God and you advance in it a little way. But then when the full brightness and the full purity of Christ's teachings begins to hit you, you wither. Your soil dries up because the way of Christ is too hard for you. It's too difficult for you. And you don't have enough character or emotional development or psychological development in your heart and in your soul to allow the Word of God to go deep. And because you're emotionally undeveloped, and psychologically undeveloped, the Word of God cannot have depth inside you. Brother, I was coming to talk to you on the Trinity in a second. Yeah, yeah let, me, let me finish this, let me finish this. So, as Christians, and so when the Son, which is representative of Jesus Christ, who is the light and life of the world, rises up, it dries us out. It dries us out, such persons. And then it goes on. Others fell amongst the thorns, and the thorns came up and choked them out. If you're that kind of soil, you're someone who receives the word of God, but then you get lost in the distractions of the world, in your career, in your marriage, in your love life, 
in your interests and hobbies, in your political causes. And these things take precedence over being a disciple of Christ and you lose the teachings of Christ in your life. And then finally, it goes on. And others fell on the good soil and yielded a crop, some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirty. If you're this kind of soil, then you're the kind of Christian that allows Jesus' teachings to go deep and transform you in such a way that you bear fruit, the fruit of the kingdom. You live by virtue, you pursue justice, you resist evil, you try to establish the kingdom of God in the world around you and in your own life. Now, whilst it isn't wrong as Christians, whilst it isn't wrong as Christians to baptize people immediately, one of the applications of this teaching is that actually we should wait and see about who the person is that is coming forward for baptism. And we should wait to discern whether this person has root in them, whether they're obsessed about the world, or whether they're resisting the word of God in their heart. We should wait to see if they bear the fruits of the kingdom before we baptize. That isn't to say that you can't baptize immediately. If you see the fruits of repentance in someone's life, if you can discern that someone is good soil upon which the word of God dwells deeply. But also in terms of church governance, there's a lot of churches that are very quick to promote new Christians, to put them in positions of authority, power and influence inside the church when they only became a Christian a month ago. This is unwise. One of the applications of the teachings of this parable is that we should wait to see what kind of person it is that has declared themselves a Christian and to see if they bear the fruits of a Christian life. And that's all really I have to say on it. <laughs>